The Japanese were still confidently undertaking to extend their area of control in the Pacific. In an attempt to capture Port Moresby on the southeastern coast of New Guinea, a Japanese naval force headed south from Truk. The fleet passed through the Solomons area and moved toward Port Moresby. The invasion force included a powerful array of Japanese warships. The Battle of the Coral Sea represented a notable development in naval warfare. In the struggle with Japan, it proved a turning point for the U.S. in the course of the war. The Japanese fleet moved steadily toward its objective. Meanwhile, a U.S. carrier task force was searching for the enemy fleet. Contact was almost established several times. The American planes were prepared for launching soon after dawn on May 4th. Some were to attack a group of Japanese ships at Tulagi, but the plan called for most of the U.S. fighters to remain aloft over their own ships for their defense. This arrangement meant that the attack squadrons would be operating without fighter cover. Furthermore, no orders were given directing the bombers and torpedo planes to make a synchronized attack. Even by the standards of those early days of the war, the attack could not be considered well organized. But the command to hit the enemy's naval units was carried out on schedule. However inept the planning, the U.S. forces took the initiative with great determination. The burden of the search for the main body of the Japanese fleet fell principally on the carrier planes operating from the Yorktown and Lexington, since land-based Allied planes were only moderately helpful in spotting the enemy fleet as it proceeded toward New Guinea. planes continued the search for several days. While the American planes were flying toward the enemy's surface force, a group of Japanese planes was searching for the U.S. ships. The pilots in both groups were hunting for big game, the enemy's warships, so they were not interested in looking for enemy planes. When the Japanese pilots spotted their targets, U.S. gunners were waiting for them. Units of the Japanese fleet were also discovered and zigzagged frantically to evade the American plane's attack. planes sank a Japanese light carrier early in the engagement. But during the two days of the main phase of the battle, Japanese planes met with great success in their strikes at the American fleet. Their principal targets were, of course, the carriers. At 11.18 a.m. on May 8th, 
Japanese planes attack the Lexington. The loss of the Lexington was a heavy blow to the already crippled U.S. Pacific Fleet. In the key naval battle of the Coral Sea, losses were almost evenly divided as far as ships were concerned. But the Japanese invasion force had been successfully put to rout. All the ships sunk in this first battle in a new kind of naval engagement were hit by planes. The surface ships never exchanged a salvo. The planes shot down constituted a considerable percentage of the carrier attack groups. The Japanese failed to realize that their plans for future attacks against U.S. forces in the Pacific were no longer a Japanese secret. Shortly before the Battle of Coral Sea, the U.S. Navy had succeeded in breaking the Japanese code. This fortunate turn of events came at a point when the U.S. Pacific Fleet was in feeble condition to fight a war across the stretches of that vast ocean. As in the case of the Coral Sea, the U.S. Navy had advance information on the next Japanese strike. 